Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's the 25th of August. As always, we have the chapters, so you can jump to any particular update you care about the most. New videos this week, they update the various certifications periodically with new topics and remove topics. So for AZ900, they added information on Microsoft Purview. So I added a module to the AZ900 full course, just covering the information you need for AZ900 related to Purview. They made a big change related to the role-based, i.e. not the 900, so not the 900s, but the other role-based certifications. It's now open book, i.e. you can access Microsoft Learn. So I just cover the basics around that. And then I did a video about the ability to reset a guest redemption, which means you can link an external identity to a new account in a federated identity provider without losing all the permissions and roles and group assignments. So on to what's new. On the compute side, we can now do a cross-subscription virtual machine restore. So as long as it's in the same tenant, I can restore my VM to another subscription. I can enable that as a property of the recovery services vault. And then I just use the regular, i.e. VM restore option or disk restore options. It will work with the existing cross zone or cross region capabilities. It will not work if I'm using Azure disk encryption, because remember Azure disk encryption is encrypting at the OS level and those keys tie into your key vault. So I can't use Azure disk encryption with this capability, but if I'm using like disk encryption sets, that, that works just fine. There's a new advisor. So obviously we have Azure Advisor that gives lots of recommendations on different aspects of our Azure usage. So now there's a recommendation to use zonal virtual machines. So this is where hey, a VM is placed in a specific availability zone. Now this is only useful if you have more than one instance. Just putting a VM in a zone, so it's just one of them, doesn't buy me a whole lot. But if I have multiple instances, make sure you distribute those over multiple zones. Now, ideally, you're using a construct like a VM scale set, and then those virtual machine scale sets will automatically, I can create a zone redundant, and it will distribute them over the zones for you. But if for some reason I'm not using VMSS uh, orchestrated or flex mode, and I'm manually just creating each individual VM, providing I have two or more, make sure you put them in different zones. On the networking side, so Azure Gov, now has front door standard and premium. Remember front door is that layer seven fantastic for my web-based workloads. It has an Anycast address, which means it's available on all the different points of presence on the Microsoft WAN. It does split TCP, so my session terminates at that closest point. My TCP session, my TLS session, so it's a quicker overall experience. It can cache information, so it's just gonna give me an overall better experience. And obviously I can add things like web application firewall to add additional resiliency. And talking of WAF, the regional web application firewall, i.e. the one that works with App Gateway, now has rate limit rules. So the point here is I can define this sliding window, these rate limit rules for that sliding window that can then block traffic that exceeds some high level that I've configured. So if there was a certain type of denial of service attack, maybe it's deliberate, or maybe a client has just misconfigured something that's bombarding you with traffic, I could now restrict it. Now the way I'm gonna do this is I can configure grouping that that sliding window will impact. Now that grouping can be based on the client IP, it can be based on a geography and the IPs that belongs to, or no grouping at all. So I can configure how I want to do the grouping to how that rate limiting will apply. And as part of the rules, I can tune it to include, exclude certain IP ranges, certain geographies, uh, the requested URI. And now there's this really nice ability for Azure Storage to quick create an Azure front door endpoint. So think about I have a blob storage account and Maybe I'm using it to host a static website. Maybe it's some documents. Well now, with a few clicks in that storage experience, I can light up Azure Front Door, which now offers, hey, protections around the WAF. It offers that caching. So now that content I was exposing through my storage account suddenly gets lit up with just a greatly improved experience for that end user. So I get better security and 
it's gonna improve the overall performance. And of course, when I do use things like Front Door, it can then integrate with things like a, a private link if I'm exposing the storage account that way. On the storage side, so the managed luster, so remember luster is very commonly used in high performance computing where I need really high performance storage systems. I have very high storage bandwidth. Well, now they've got two performance tiers, which is based on the amount of storage I've provisioned in tebibytes. So there's a 40 megabyte per second per tebibyte provisioned or a 500 megabyte per second per tebibyte performance um, provisioned. Now, obviously, the 500 megabytes is going to cost me more. But if I do have these really high throughput demands, but it's a smaller data set, um, this new 500 megabyte option is going to be fantastic. If I have just a very large data set, well, then the 40 megabyte per second per provision terabyte is probably going to be better. Um, I think the the way this works is you can have up to 768 tebibytes for this option, and this one is basically set at four tebibytes. So we have those options available. On the database side, so AZAC snap nine has now gone GA. So this is all about the idea that it handles the orchestration required to get an app consistent snapshot of a third party database running on Linux. So this could be something like SAP HANA, Oracle database, and now also IBM DB2 database. It now integrates with system managed identity. And the goal is it does all of the orchestration tasks that can um, flush the changes out to disk, pause the changes, and then integrate with Azure NetApp files, integrate with the Azure Large Instance running on bare metal to get those app consistent snapshots of that third party database running on Linux. And then miscellaneous, um, if you're using troubleshooting guides on App Insights, that's being deprecated. So basically you can go in, you can look at the troubleshooting guide and click change type, just change it to a workbook. That's the go forward strategy. And that was it. I hope this was useful. Until the next video, take care.